uh, that a lot of uh, good things uh, happened to try to lower crime, save lives, and all of that. But clearly, some things happened that uh, were not foreseen and need to be now addressed. And I, I think that's good leadership. You know, you don't do something and never keep asking, is it working? Is it having unintended consequences? Hillary Clinton earlier this month on CNN State of the Union, defending her husband's record on criminal justice while also acknowledging that his policies disproportionately affected minorities. You see, back in 1994, then-President Bill Clinton signed a crime bill establishing mandatory minimum sentences and a federal three strikes provision. Mr. Clinton said since he regrets those policies, but Secretary Clinton continues to face criticism over that previous president's record and her support at the time for those changes to criminal justice law. For more, we're pleased to be joined by F. Lee Bailey, famed defense attorney and author of the book, Excellence in Cross-Examination. Counselor, we really appreciate your time, and Secretary Clinton says she views over-incarceration as one of the biggest consequences of Bill Clinton's Criminal Justice Reform Act. Do you agree with Secretary Clinton on this? I do, but I would footnote her remark over incarceration of everybody, primarily including minorities. So in your opinion, sir, what needs to change? I think we better take a whole new look. America has the attention span of a four-year-old. We don't learn very quickly. Prohibition should have taught us that organized crime, murder, and huge amounts of cash escalate from saying to the public, you can't have this even though you want it. Same thing happened with a whole bunch of drugs that probably don't need to be the subject of heavy penalties. Hasn't done any good. The traffic hasn't gone down. In G indeed, George H.W. Bush created a whole new world of profit for druggies when he declared the war on drugs and immediately the price of cocaine went from about 3,000 a kilo to 16. That is not a recipe for any kind of success. Counselor, there are other concerns involving Secretary Clinton, as you know, perhaps uh, potential criminal legal jeopardy for her uh, concerning her private email server. What do you know of that case and do you think it's possible that she might be indicted? No, I don't. I think the whole thing is fluff. It's been pumped up. The president has to pay, kind of keep silent about it because his administration is being invited to bring harm to his former secretary of state. There wasn't any crime committed. I think that Bernie Sanders, one of the few things he said that I agree with, summed it up when he said, let's not talk anymore about your damn emails. I think that's a smokescreen. All right, let's go back in history and talk about your involvement in the O.J. Simpson case, the uh, team of defense attorneys known as the Dream Team. And, of course, that has been reintroduced to a lot of Americans through the FX series The People vs. O.J. Simpson. How accurate is the dramatization of what actually happened in that case? Do you think they stuck pretty close to the history, or did Hollywood uh, let its cinematic license overtake the facts of the case? I'm afraid the latter is true. It's not a very good presentation. It certainly is not historically faithful, but I want to interject at this point. Some of the acting was superb. I have met John Travolta. I don't know him well. His portrayal of Bob Shapiro was right on the money. Marsha Clark, Johnny Cochran, Judge Ito, Chris Darden, and yes, yours truly, were well portrayed by actors who had done some homework. The plot, on the other hand, is not very good. It doesn't help the public much. They had a lot more truth available to them, and the producers were trying to keep the question open. Had they been more honest, more members of the public would be saying, oh my goodness, I guess he couldn't have done it. Well, let me ask, since you mentioned um, the actor who portrayed you, Nathan Lane, two questions. You think he was pretty effective, but if you moved from being a defense attorney to a casting director, who would you like uh, most like to see play you? Maybe yourself 
in one of these uh, situations? Could you no. take to the boards no. and do it yourself? I am not an actor. I make up lines as I go along. I don't memorize them in order to read them into a play. That's a specialty that I don't have. Now, I've been portrayed by Walter McGinn, who did a great job in the Shepherd murder case and then killed himself, James Dean style, driving a Porsche into an abutment by Christopher Plummer, which could have been great. He's a wonderful actor. The show was terrible. And this time by Nathan Lane. I mean, nobody could be displeased with that kind of performance. And he did a good job. We will have to leave it right there. F. Lee Bailey, noted defense attorney. We thank you for your time. Back with more after this.